So welcome everybody to the March 11th, 2021 edition of the Value Working Group. It's good to see everybody. It looks like everybody is um, ahead of themselves. So thank you for doing that. Chainsaws are cool. I don't own a chainsaw, but I would like to. Nor do I. I just get to listen uh, to them all day. <laughs> oof. Yeah. Kevin, a chainsaw. Kevin, do you own a chainsaw? I bet you're a chainsaw owner. I do own a chainsaw. Yep. <laughs> uh, we have a giant tree that somebody cut up when they took it down in our backyard. Like it looks like about 20 years ago. I want to get an ax and cut it into firewood. It's like too big for a chainsaw. It's like the trunk of it's like these like eight chunks of tree trunk. Get yourself a um, is it called a mall? Like uh, a, a wedge. The yeah. Is yeah, that that's what I need is a wedge. Yeah. Hey, Sean. All righty. So we had, um, I had a couple things that I want to bring forward to this group. I, this meeting, I thought was at 10 my time, but it was at nine. So it appeared a little faster on my calendar than I thought. Um, so the first is, is share a voice slash organizational impact. So if you could click on that link um, and head over to share a voice. So I kind of went through and either accepted comments. Um, so basically this was a metric that was put forward and share a voice. I, I did a little bit of research on what share a voice is. And share a voice is really, it truly is a marketing term. It's something I think of um, at least from what I understand, um, really more in the in the sales marketing side of the world. And I, I think that is a little bit out of band with what we're trying to accomplish with chaos metrics. Nonetheless, I think it is has led to some interesting discussions. Um, and I think that's what has led us to this idea of organizational impact. So I'm kind of suggesting we move away from share of voice as a metric and more towards organizational impact. I don't know what people's thoughts are here. I'm, I'm not a fan of the name organizational impact uh, because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't signal to me what this metric is. Well, we can change the name. Is it, I'm, I guess the first thing is like kind of moving off of share of voice towards- That's, that's, that's fine, I, I, I get that. Uh, it, is, it is very much a marketing term. Uh, I, should, I should say though it was, it was divine it was defined and written based on based on that marketing term right so yeah, i understand that and i think giga it was it was it's part of that giganto metric we released right uh no and, no okay this was one that uh matt broberg brought forward uh and obviously he has a marketing background uh i just didn't feel that kind of reading it had fit real well with how we've been thinking about open source so it might, it's, I guess, so the first suggestion is just kind of moving off of share of voice or if, or if not, we just keep it. We revert everything back towards it. Sean or Elizabeth or Peru, do you have comments? I don't, I don't think share of voice is quite, um, it's, it's a sub, I mean, because it's a marketing term, I think it is highly subjective and um doesn't communicate like a metric right like it's a it's sort of a and i don't know I, so I, i'm kind of in favor of moving off of share a voice as the name i don't know if organizational impact or um organizational community voice or organizational community impact or um because i think what this is talking about is essentially what's the what is the the significance of the role of particular firms in an open source community. Am I reading, if I was, is that kind of what we're getting at? Yes. And so I think share a voice, I've been putting a few things in here chat wise. From what yeah. I could come and that's not what we're doing. That it was about in industry stuff. Elizabeth, I see you're unmuted. I, I was just, wondering how this fits in with the value piece of things. So are we trying to measure the value that an organization brings to an, organ, uh, an open source project? Um, or are we trying to 
um, determine the value that an organization gets from their participation by having that large market share. I think that's the part I struggle with is how this equates or how this ties into the value piece. Yep. So are the, the two options are like as an organization, what value I derive by having, say, if we just impact or influence at this point, is that one way of looking at it? I guess that's my question. I think, I think it is, um, okay. but I think we need to make that explicit. And what was the other way of looking at it? Uh, what value the organization brings to the open source project by I giving gotcha. them, uh, you know, guidance and um, advice and expertise. Gotcha. So I, I don't think, uh, I don't think in value metrics, I don't think we've actually talked about the value that an organization provides to a project. Uh, I don't think we've used that perspective before. That might be a metric. I don't know. Um, Cause I think that, you know, if, if it's like someone from Google, if there's, you know, people from Google working on your open source project, then that brings a sense of legitimacy and, um, you know, visibility to your project. So I think that there is something to be said for that, but that, yeah, that, that might be completely different than what we're talking about right here. So we have, we have societal value. So the, the value that a project uh, provide society, we have organizational value, which is the value that the project provides an organization. We have individual value, which is the value that the project provides an individual. And then we have communal value, which is the degree to which a project is valuable to a community of users. So is, is, uh, is the one about organizational value? Is that about the value an organization contributes to a project or- No, the other way around. I heard it backwards the, there, yeah, okay. It's the other way around. It's the, the <clears throat> value that a project contributes to an organization or so why is this project valuable to an organization? I guess uh, it's right in the minutes, if you take a look, I put like the two things, hey Steven. Yeah, so the, the value that an organization provides to a project would be a, for this working group, it would be a new way of thinking about value. That one, the first one. I'm yeah. sorry, the first one. I thought Kevin said the current statement about it is the reverse of the first one. What value does an organization bring to a community? Yeah, that, that's a new idea. What value does an organization derive from the community is the current focus group or focus area. So that's... <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's a problem with this metric in general. So that would be a third shift, right? right? Like we go from social... <laughs> Uh, whatever social share a voice to organizational impact to organizational value derivation <laughs> from participating in a community. W which is fine. I mean, it's just because we have, you know, a metric that we've worked on and kind of brought forward, if we can never, never, if we can never kind of make it work with what the working group is trying to accomplish, that's okay. I mean, we don't have to, you know, square a peg in a round hole kind of thing. We don't have to force fit things. <laughs> so that's for sure. So what, what, it, what does this metric actually measure? So it says that it, in reading the description, it says that it, it measures organizational influence. So is this is this kind of a like a market share type thing? Well, that's what share of voice is kind of connected to, I think. Share of voice. So a lot of this is still kind of share of voicey, right? Uh -huh. Share of voice is a measure of the market your brand owns compared to your competitors. Again, I can put that in the chat.
So the greater your market share, the more authority you're likely to have. So what about this question here, the one I highlighted? How organizational engagement directs a particular open source community? So um, what is the impact of corporate interests on a given open source community? Is that another way to phrase that? I'm coming in in the middle, so I'm kind no, of- No, no, that's fine. I think we're looking for some direction here. So we have, could you say that again, Stephen? So how much corporate influence is there on a given FOSS project, right? X amount, you know, companies A, B, and C yep. um, have X number of percentage of part-time and full-time people paid just to work on project Y and what does that mean, right? So you're, you're looking, I guess, at per percentage or, or the, the number of contributors who are doing it as part of their job and what that, who they work for. Yeah, this, this, um, some of this came up in the discussions I've had with a couple people in to-do group um, um, over the past week or so. I haven't gotten a lot on just the broad, hey guys, what do you think? So I'm gonna to have to go targeted. Um, several, uh, I, I would say at least 50 to 60% of uh, the people said, gee, that's kind of hard to figure out. and. And frankly, nobody's asked me what our direct ROI is on doing this. And I'm glad they haven't because it's messy. <laughs> so thanks, right? <laughs> but um, some people pointed me to the principles of authentic uh, sustain group that Georg's in already is people are talking about that. And then related to this. I think Justin's part of that too, isn't he? Okay. Yeah, the person I talked to just met mentioned Georg. Then in the, the first round of the critical digital infrastructure stuff that I was part of, there were a couple of papers that looked at this. Um, Martin Micklemeyer, I know, had done that. What factors encourage and sustain? So what do people think about Stephen's comment on, I put it in the notes, it looks like somebody else's jotting it down in the, the um, metric too. Yeah, and there, and there was a bunch of discussion on this recently in, um, in the private channel of the to-do group. So I can't just grab and paste what was in there. That's fine. But a, a lot of discussion over, you know, Apache has this pledge that you, you can't be working, um, you know, Whatever you work on Apache, it doesn't matter whether you're being paid to or not. You're only an individual. You're you're not supposed to be representing your corporation. And then there was some discussion over Apache and the Apache board and their transparency, whether or not they were doing a good job of keeping up on that or whether they were letting things slide. Um, so so people... maybe that's why this is in my... Um... Yeah, so there was a... Let me grab... Well, let me let me get some thoughts from other people here too. So, do um, how much corporate influence is present in an open source project? Is that is a given project? What do people think of of that question for a metric, irrespective of what we call it at the moment? Yeah. So is I just good? dumped a link to a one pager in chat from one of the Ford studies that looked at this. Okay. Or, or different aspects of this. So what are, do, do Sean or Kevin or Elizabeth have thoughts on this kind of evolving question? Uh, 
Uh, I like the question. I feel like it's it's a it's a big departure from share of voice. Uh, so it it it, uh, it changes this to the project level, whereas the share of voice yeah. metric prior is more at the ecosystem level. Yeah. Uh, mind you, I, I struggle. I actually I kind of struggle to understand how how we would measure that at the ecosystem level. To be honest. Uh, I do too. It, it I think I much, it seems much more manageable at the project level, but then it becomes. I think what what I what I wrote uh, an alternate question um, below the how much corporate influence present is just what is the ratio of paid employees to volunteer employees in a in a community? Is that the same thing in a project? I mean, that could be one way of measuring it, perhaps. You know, like when we talk about data collection strategies. Mm -hmm. I also like this question better because um, it's still agnostic. So, so if, like, if if the answer is there's a ton of corporate corporate influence, that might be to Elizabeth's point earlier, extremely valuable, um, as determined by whomever wants to determine that. Um, but that might also be completely on not valuable <laughs> for for a group. So. It, we're not ascribing whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think just trying to draw out how much corporate influence there is in a project is so, pretty reasonable to me. So Common has a metric called organizational diversity. How is this, how is this one different than organizational diversity? So this could be like who, from from stemming from that diversity, who are the committers who are merging the PRs? So if we're starting to look at influence, you know, just, so just because there's a lot of organizational diversity in a project, that doesn't mean that they necessarily constitute, say, the core team. Yeah, one of the um, objectives of that organizational diversity is see the percentage of contributions from each organization within a defined period of time. So that kind of speaks to how much influence, if you were looking at percentage, maybe. And it says a list of people associated. So you could see if, you know, there's a correlation between core or co often, you know, um, repetitive committers and things and, and commenters and such maybe i don't think i think if we if we go this route with it i don't think there's enough differentiation between the the common one as as we're talking about it right now uh if we were to if we were to take it up to that ecosystem level which was the i believe the original intention uh i think there's differentiation but i think we we have to treat it differently at that level as well well, Stephen, is this kind of jiving with what you were bringing forward to? I, th I think so. Um, okay. You know, I, I mean, I think there's something to it in that paper or that, that one pager that might address some of it. And you know, it is hard to figure out, you know, diversity just because open source project X has 30% full-time paid contributors from two organizations, right? How do you really track whether they're representing their true selves or their their corporate masters right that's kind of what we're really asking and i don't know that you can tease that out um i mean not not without doing some kind of qualitative interview of the people right. who are who are the contributors um, unless you were you were doing some kind of in-depth analysis of what 
you know, Amazon or Google, what their what their main directions of doing A, B, and C were, and is that trickling down into this project? Okay, so this is this is very interesting. Sean, you had also put a few comments in there. If you can unmute, Sean Gaggins. I don't. I don't know that he can. Um, okay. I'm. He just says that, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, we always know how much of a corporate contributor's time is paid. I think that's a really great point because that's not really public information in a lot of places. Um, like, how do you find that? And, right. and Stephen, to your point too, I think would it would it make a difference if someone's just for as an example logged in with their company. A GitHub account versus their personal GitHub account? Would that be a delineator or, or no? Is that not reliable? Um, I, it, it may not be reliable based on another <clears throat> set of conversations. Um, there's a new, there's a new Linux foundation project board spinning up and the, the people who are running that project said, hey, we're going to open the repo to members who are official members of the Linux board. You need to have your, um, you need to sign in, you need to give us your, your corporate email and your, your, your personal email, and you need to give us the corporate GitHub account. And a lot of people said, well, I, I don't, we don't have corporate GitHub accounts. We have this, that, or the other thing. Let me find that um, real question. Oh, 3D. So this is all super interesting um, for real. <laughs> it's kind of funny how we started out at Share a Voice and then ended up landing on a metric that may have already been developed in common, <laughs> at least so close. So this, so that what they had said was, we need the name, corporate email, and GitHub ID that's being used. And the response was, a lot of people don't have GitHub accounts associated with their corporate email. This comes up a lot. So I guess that's right. That you know, and I have the same problem with um. In, in starting to try to collect metrics on my faculty, which I'll do in the fall. Um, when I was talking to the, the Center for Open Science folks in OSF that, that I mentioned to you folks, you know, I said, how can I tell, you know, is there any way for them to tell how many people are actually from RIT in their system at the moment? And, you know, their response is pretty much the same as, as the GitHub response, right? Unless they used an RIT EDU email address, or unless it says somewhere in like the title of whatever they're doing or the description of what they're doing, it's an RIT project, we can't tell. So we can do a quick scan and I can see that there's like 45 or 50 people I can identify as RIT, but that's only so reliable. So let me make a kind of a suggestion. Um, it seems like as we, it seems like this is hard. And Sean, I've seen you've been putting things in there with respect to the ecosystem. And so there's a, with respect to, to ecosystem and Kevin, this is also to your point that, that like, actually I'm, I'm writing that stuff in there. Okay, so doing this work at the ecosystem level is pretty tricky, right? And so my mind immediately went to the work. Just bear bear with me for a second here, but the work that's occurring in risk, the risk working group, obviously with dependencies. All right. And so the work that's occurring in risk is at least moving towards what I believe to be defining some bounds of an ecosystem. Am I right? I think I am, Sean. And then against that bounding, you can ask a variety of questions, right? So once a, if, if a mapping can be done of whatever like quote an ecosystem is, you can ask a series of questions against 
that map. So you can imagine a huge dependency tree. So it, at an ecosystem level, would it make sense that we could ask a question such as how, um, within this ecosystem, how many communities does a particular company have engagement with, right? So let's say that there's a, a map of, of 20 projects that constitutes an ecosystem. I, this seems super challenging still, but there's a map of, of 20 projects that constitutes an ecosystem. And company A is a committer on 18, or somebody from that company is a committer on 18 of those 20 projects. <laughs> I would say that that organization has a fairly significant impact on that ecosystem. Would we ever want to think about it that way? I that... think I think that's kind of where where I was moving with that. But I think it's also uh I don't know if so I, I'm trying to take the kind of the the idea from the original metric still. Uh, and and I, I think it's it's not ecosystem isn't quite right. It's more about the comparison of competitive products, right? So if there are if there are ten open source projects that are uh, writing drone code, for example, uh, understanding what organizations are contributing to those projects, and then the popularity of those projects. I think those two things together gives gives that idea of share of voice, right? So the which organization is has the largest percentage of this drone code space, competitive space. Other thoughts on this? I mean, this is how I'm kind of starting to see it too. And to be honest with you, this seems like far away <laughs> from being able to do <laughs> at the moment. I think we could do it for any of the any uh, uh, for for a lot of different things that could be comparable, right? So you could do it like for programming language, for example. So which which organizations have the most market share in Python open source program uh, open and source how projects? Would we, or, how what would be a sensible way to kind of define the bounds of <laughs> Python? <laughs> like, is it? Is it the main Python repo, whatever that might be? And then one layer of dependencies above and one layer of dependencies below? Is that the bounds? I mean, that could be, we could set them however we want. Because I mean, it sounds like, like something like Python is infinitely large. Something like the kernel is infinitely large. So Elizabeth, you had a comment? Um, I was just, if. I think to Kevin's point, I think, Kevin, when you're talking, it seems like more about categorizing projects around a topic or a goal, Yeah. which if, if we could figure out a, a great way to do that, we have the same problem with the, uh, the social value piece is, was we were kind of struggling with like, how do we put, how do we determine social value? How do we find those projects that are socially impactful um, or that are working for good? quote unquote, the, the greater good. So if we can figure out a way to do this, it will have widespread implications on a lot of other metrics that we could then slice things a little differently and, and really go a little deeper. And the only thing I can add to that is I know at one point GitHub was trying to get projects to tag themselves and categorize themselves. And I don't know if that has been super successful. I don't know how many projects actually do that. Um, but I know at one point that was their goal. So I don't know. So uh, Kevin or Elizabeth, it sounds like you, you two are kind of on the same page. I'm, could you explain this a little bit more? I'm not sure I'm totally following when it comes to like categories. So it'd be like, you know, um, I have software that uh, does, um, Digital infrastructure, for instance, you know, like uh, these are server 
packages or, you know, just things that kind of bring them together. One could say that, you know, I don't know. Let me find some examples. Kevin, you talk. How about, how about with per the example of uh, Zephyr? So Zephyr, Zephyr is an embedded OS project, right? So how many, how many embedded OS projects are out there? Uh, we could, we figure out that count, say there's 10 of them. And then there's we look at the- Six competitive ones. So there's, okay. Thank you, thank you. So, so there's six competitive open source projects in embedded operating systems. So we then, we take a look at those projects. We look at the organizations that contribute to those projects. And then we look at the, basically we look at the, what that engagement looks like. Some sort of yeah. ratio of like, uh, ratio of organizational engagement, but also maybe uh, some sort of measure of how uh, okay. competitive the project is. Okay, so so in this scenario, it actually, thankfully, has nothing to do with dependencies. Correct. Okay, that's good. <laughs> the, I dropped a I dropped a link in there. So this is what GitHub had tried to do with topics, like lumping or putting you know like projects into into buckets. So like here are all the COVID nineteen projects, for instance. And I don't know how well people because it's all self assigned so i don't know how well people are doing with that or if you know a, a like a 3d modeling project is just going to put all kinds of tags on it to get more visibility like i don't know i don't know but that was i know the one of the ideas with helping people find projects that were interesting to them by lumping them in into projects and collections too collections um is another one that uh i can drop in here that I know that they were trying to kind of bring a, bring things together in a different way. Um, so like open journalism, like that's a collection of projects that all kind of relate to the same thing, maybe written totally differently, but they all relate to the same topic or same goal. Gotcha, so then, so then the metric would basically say based on these, collections or whatever the first one was. Um, but based on some categorization, we're trying to get an idea of how much influence organization A has in this space. Is that right? Or, or multiple organizations. Okay. So organization A or, or multiple organizations. Okay, so would that require trying to determine within, say like your example, Elizabeth, with the COVID-19 projects, would that require some determination of which of those projects are more influential than others? Or would we just level them all as declared COVID-19 projects? You know what I mean? And they're all just equally they're all equal. I, I think you have to have some sort of weighting. So projects have, there are projects that have more impact than other projects. So I, I do think we have to have some sort of weighting for that. So then maybe the first metric, I'm sorry, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, um, maybe stars is what I was just gonna say, but I don't know about GitLab. Like, I don't know if this translates into other platforms because I, I don't know, but um, stars might be one or activity, something like that. So then maybe the first metric is defining influential projects within a collection. And there was another one of the critical digital infrastructure research projects, which currently doesn't appear to have a one page or so I don't know if that means they never finished or they just published it somewhere else. But they were trying to look at what is the impact of non-financial support, right? How how much did just getting a lot of thumbs ups or stars or likes influence individual individual contributors or um, the project overall? I should drop them a note and ask them where to find their stuff. 
but if this is a, that's interesting. So if this is a two-step process or three, so one, I think what would have to happen is based on a collection, however that's determined. So you, value, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I just want to say real quick that uh, project popularity is a value metric that we have already defined. So we could look at it based on project popularity as, as the the ranker of uh, importance. So based on this this collection bounding, whatever that bounding is, if it's on GitHub or something, we apply the popularity metric in an effort to sort of rank order the projects that are in this collection. End of end of metric number one. Metric number two would then say, based on this collection and the rank order, we would like to understand which companies are having the most influence, probably based on their heavy involvement in the top, you know, like three of the top 10 projects might be very influential. So, so that's interesting. And I think it actually goes back towards share of voice a little bit more because we're starting to look at ecosystem. Um, what are other people's thoughts on this? It's a Mobius strip or something else. We're back to where we started. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool. I like that. Um, I think. Kevin, yeah. Yeah, I, I like it. I think that's the. I'll be honest, that's that's kind of the direction I was I was pushing towards. <laughs> How about you, Elizabeth? Is that just makes yeah, sense? Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. I think it makes total sense. And I also think there is some um, the, another metric that would be related to the dependencies in the ecosystem and how involved a company is and with the dependencies on either side of them, as Sean, I think, was getting at. Gotcha. Okay. Right, right, there could be a variety of ways that an ecosystem is created. It, it could be obviously through dependencies. And I think it could also be through these collection tags or whatever the first one was that you had in there, Elizabeth. I can't seem after after you said collection. Uh, oh. Topics. Yeah. So there may be a couple different ways to kind of bring forward a collection. But then the questions would still be the same after the collection is determined. Once we have some bounding of projects, however they're bound, we could then ask questions about influence within this collection. Okay. John, is this resonating with you? I know you're on mute. Okay. And Stephen, is this sounding cool? Yeah, it's. I don't think we're done, but <laughs> it's all good then. I'll just revert all share of voice things back to the start and. <laughs> all right, I, I did um, send a note to one of the two researchers who was doing the non-financial incentives study to find out where her stuff was. So I can right, add thanks. that to the stuff I sent from the financial one. All right. Cool. Thank you. Um, all right. Cool. So uh, I think this was super helpful for me today. I don't know about other people, um, but this this could also, yeah, this, and, and then to Elizabeth's point too, if we can start kind of determining, like, I, I think I might have to think about it a little bit more, but how this process would translate to social value. But I think you might be like we would just say like it would be like a topics question again and taking a look at the COVID-19 and just trying to take a look at which of those projects are most popular <laughs> really I think the challenge will be to determine um uh, in a repeatable way and not just mm -hmm. like manual eyes um what what buckets constitute a socially impactful bucket yeah Right, like it's not, maybe it's not just that topic tag or that collection tag, 
Right. Yeah. You, it, it seems like it needs at this point anyway, needs a human being to kind of look through and say, yeah, that one is no, that one's not. Yeah, that one is. I don't think we but. necessarily have to define that though, because we, we can leave that up to the, uh, the user context, right? Because the, this, that measurement would always be based on that, that focal area that they're interested in. So if it's, if it's COVID-19 research, that's the thing they're interested in. Uh, or if it's if it's Kate Stewart at uh, at Zephyr, you know, she's going to point it at embedded her competitors, right? So embedded operating systems. So we could there could be an opportunity to make a metric that is like how to define a, a collection. Mm -hmm. And here are a couple of different ways that you can do this. Like we could have a description and an objective as to why you would make a collection. <laughs> in the first place. And maybe, honestly, maybe that's a common metric. Collections. Yeah, well, that's, that's based on the, I would say that's, that's, it's very, very much based on the social comparison work that we were doing. How do you choose which projects to compare with? Then like in the data collection, pages, there could be a couple different pieces of advice given as to how you might go about doing this. And it could be using like what Elizabeth had brought forward, the, the tags that are available in GitHub. Or to your point, Kevin, it could be, you're just need, gonna need to sit down and think about it. <laughs> you know, there might be a human, a human way of getting this done too. Yeah, th this was a conversation um, that, uh, is it Eric Boucher from OVO? And I had in class the other day is you know, similar, kind of like a Venn diagram problem is I went through all of their, you know, issues and needs and stuff like that. And, you know, I said to him, there's not a lot of non code contributions that shows up in your system you know, and we all know there's more than code to, to open source. And he said, you know, yeah, well, we're just pulling from GitHub and people tend not to put that stuff in their tags, you know, and we're looking at their tags. And I said, are you doing education for the projects that sign up with you that, hey, it'd be cool if you also put these tags in so we could start tracking that stuff. And he says, I tried once, you know, so it's trying trying to capture this kind of stuff is so hard when it's just automated. Agreed. All right. Well, we are approaching the end of time. This was a Sean, thank you. I think you were taking the notes, Sean. Is that right? So thank you for doing that. Um and seriously, thank you for the really thoughtful <laughs> comments throughout this, this meeting. I know we didn't solve anything, but I feel like um, a way forward is, <laughs> is in front of us now, which I is copied. Cool. Uh, I copied a few of those bullets and dropped them into the organizational impact uh, document. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, well, well, I think we'll pick this up quite well in two weeks. I think we have something to kind of move forward with. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Good see to you see later. everybody. We'll see y'all later.